So nice to be back. Are runes actually selling the news event? Should you be minting all the runes that are coming up on the marketplace like crazy? Are you being led by your influencers into a bloodbath? Runes are done? What's the future of runes in the first place? 2x call in my Discord by one of the Discord members that did a 2x, 3x at the top overnight, right at the halving time. Let's actually start. Right now you do have an option, like this video, subscribe to this channel and let's actually start. Right now you do have an option to mint new runes. Unfortunately, most of the ones worth minting most likely are minted already. If you would actually check out mempool, which shows the current price for Bitcoin transactions, we would see that it's not that high because at the time of halving, we were as high as 3,000 sets per V-byte, which are just crazy, crazy numbers. You never seen this before just with originals. It definitely shows us that there are more people interested in the industry, in the runes, into Bitcoin ecosystem at this stage, which also shows us that upside might be quite limited. More people, less profits. Very, very simple. We've seen several nice runes here on luminex.io. You can actually check out what are the runes that are being minted currently. It's pretty much exactly the same structure as minting ordinals and BRC20 assets as well. For example, right now we can see that people are minting rare pops pop cash. There is no marketplace for runes at this stage, as far as I know. Therefore, no one knows how well and how much these assets would actually be appreciated, what they will actually be valued at. We are waiting for the marketplace to actually launch so people would actually be able to buy and sell them. And right now, the opportunity that you might have is to actually OTC, buy or sell some of the stuff that you minted. I'm quite sure that in Bitcoin specific communities, OTCs, buy and sells are going quite well at this stage. And I do know that probably for most of you, all of this is just something new. You don't know, you're not sure whether or not you should actually be figuring these things out. From my perspective, from my point of view, right now what we can see in the mempool is that cost per transaction for fast, for high priority is actually $80. So to mint one chunk of runes, of certain rune token, one batch, as they call them, you need to spend 80 bucks, which definitely means that they would significantly need to appreciate in price for you to pretty much break even. And right now you're watching someone who was minting so much shit tokens back in December and January in BRC20, CBRC20, a bunch of different standards, a bunch of diff, most of them, they are worth nothing. They pretty much just went to zero. No one wants to buy them. That's why I want to say that if you were minting top 10 runes, it's probably going to be all right. If you have ways to receive top 10 runes, which we are going to discuss in this video as well, you would probably be all right as well. Currently, I would not be minting random runes tokens. However, there might be an opportunity and I will tell you the way how you can actually seize these opportunities. The main thing you want to be minting at this stage are the things that are being mentioned in different OG Bitcoin ordinal communities. And there are a range of them. There are things like node monkeys, puppets and Bitcoin frogs. Unfortunately, most of them, they cost quite a lot at this stage. Community that you can actually get into, that you can actually buy NFT off, which is not that pricey at this stage. It's just 1K currently is actually hold honey badgers. They are the guys that are minting stuff, BRC20 in runes, very, very nice community with a lot of alpha. I was there exit liquidity, not one time, not two times, not three times. These guys definitely know how to mint stuff on the marketplace. And they might be nice source of information in terms of what things you should actually be minting. The only one thing that I call to mint in my community, and I think I mint some of it myself as well, 
is Satoshi Nakamoto. The main reason for that is because Chinese guy actually called in Bitcoin frogs that all of the things that Western people are minting, they're just too Western. Like this dog name is Elias or things like that. And thesis here is that Asian communities and Asian guys, they will be on the forefront of these things and West will be exit liquidity as it already was in December, in January, as I also was in December and January. I do like this thesis. And the main fat point about this runes token is that 20% of supply is actually being owned by the creators of this thing. Same situation we had on NodeMonkeys. And NodeMonkeys are doing quite well. I definitely did not mint enough of this thing just a small small batch but i do have a feeling that something like this might actually be doing well and in general top 10 tokens top 10 runes as well but the most interesting things in these type of situations where we see something new actually appearing on the marketplace is to follow the teams that proved themselves already is to follow the teams that created something on the marketplace is to follow the teams that have provided assets, have delivered assets that appreciated in value heavily, that know how to work with communities. And I'm speaking about Kongs. Something Kongs actually spent half a million dollars on. They were able to acquire second ever rune called Decentralized Cyber Kongs NFT Collection on Ethereum. They were able to acquire second runes, second runes token. And obviously, second is very, very close to first one. And we will have this first mover advantage. People would just be buying things that are close to the place number one. And their NFTs, Prometheans, that they actually just launched several days ago, they surged up in price like crazy. They pretty much went from 0.03 to 0.09. And right now, they are at 0.07. And I don't understand people who are selling these things currently because holders of these things, they would actually be receiving runes tokens. These runes that the guys established were able to etch, were able to launch by themselves, spending half a million dollars to actually acquire place number two. An interesting thing is that you might ask, were there a community where it was called to buy this thing several hours before the halving. Was there someone who actually called to buy this thing so you could make a quick 2x short term, but at the same time, just be able to hold these things because you are holding an NFT from NFT community that was being valued. One NFT of CyberCongs was actually valued on around 100 to 150 thousand dollars at the peak of the last bull run. You might ask, was there a community that actually called these things several hours before the halving for a quick 2, 3x? It's actually my Discord. And the greatest thing about this part is the fact that they were not called by me initially. Member of community mentioned them as an asset that you might want to get to get exposure to runes. I check it out, I like the thesis, and I called it in the whole community. It was 2x, 3x at the tops. And what I like the most about these things, you need to understand that the main thing currently is to actually survive. And at the same time, make sure that you won't be wasting your liquidity on overpriced assets at this stage already, because yeah, we have some feel like not monkeys. We have some feel like Bitcoin puppets as well. Whether or not you should be buying them at these levels, I would not suggest so. I think they're quite pricey at this stage. But a collection on ordinals from OG Ethereum collection, from people that show that they know this space, they know how to build things in space, they know how to build community, how to provide value to the community space because last cycle cons they were just printing free money for the holders it was so crazy with the tokens it's not just that like that community they were launching meme coins gm was launched in the last cycle by them that did like 300x crazy crazy amount of multipliers very very close to the top of that market as well the alpha 
things you actually need to do currently because it's so easy to lose in this pvp scenario you just start to chase random bullshit tokens that have zero utility zero value that will just all go to zero you lose your money and you just need to survive you just need to wait the alpha thing to actually be doing currently is to bind into alpha assets what can be better than buy early the ordinals of og Ethereum NFT community that was appreciated at $100,000, dollars Things that they've done, I know you might not understand this. Having second rune, it's so, so crazy. No one could actually have predicted that. And obviously, I didn't know that when I took the information in and I immediately just bought myself. Immediately just bought myself. My thesis was... This is ordinal NFT from CyberConks. That's all I heard. That's all I heard. I bought that immediately and I called it as a call inside the community as well. After a community member shared that this might be a nice exposure to runes in the first place. You want to buy this type of assets from people that can build, ideally from proven people, from people who disrupted the industry already, that you know that you actually know can build stuff in crypto and succeed with this stuff as well. Just buy the stuff and just hold. It can be eight months hold, 10 months hold, 12 months hold. It's definitely not a PVP type of strategy. It's definitely not something that like you get your access and multipliers right away. Because when I was buying these things, did I know that Kongs would be able to secure runes number two? Obviously not. I would just buy it because of the fact that this is this collection. This is these people. I know it's most likely going to be huge because they know how to deliver. This is ultimate PV type of assets. That's why I'm not that good at selling. I'm buying into things that I know have a higher chance to actually survive till PV scenario till the peak euphoria because this is how you make money you might want to actually farm up some liquidity in pvp and take money from other people in the marketplace in the first place it might be quite hard because people who are playing pvp they're quite skilled right now at this stage secondly there is way more room for error you are playing with your funds you're entering some pvp shitty coin it goes to zero your funds are gone and don't get me wrong, I'm playing it as well. I'm throwing like tens of thousands of dollars into Digen shit, expecting to win in PvP. I'm throwing it into tokens that I do not expect to probably survive till PV type of scenario. But it's so small, small, small part of portfolio because I do understand that winners just need to survive. And why? this part of the market is so so interesting is because you actually have the option to acquire these assets to acquire assets from people that are well connected that know what are they doing that, that have actually results of success either in the own portfolios or in what they've done for the industry which is even better you have the chance to acquire the assets from these type of people early this is why this stage of the market is very, very important. And this is why you actually want to mostly focus in on acquiring these type of assets. I'm not selling much stuff. Like I'm just, I'm just increasing the exposure that I have into the assets that I think will be doing well and into the narratives that I think will be doing well. Layer ones, memes, and Bitcoin ecosystem looks very, very interesting currently as well. But again, months ago, I did not care about Bitcoin ecosystem much. I was just holding the stuff that I was buying back then. And maybe in the current scenario, the fact that it's being hyped up, it's just PVP type of environment where people that position themselves early, they're trying to take your money through this PVP stuff. So they're creating this hype to make sure you will use your liquidity to, to jump into that thing so you would actually lose your funds. Things that Kong's actually done, number two rune, 
and the call in the community just so so crazy obviously it was a very very low chance something like this would be happening in the first place although i'm checking out some information from the before and it seems like people were sure that they will be taking certain place in runes in rune tokens but people just didn't know that they would actually be acquiring the place number two some people were thinking that maybe they will be acquiring place number one some people were saying that maybe they would even not be able to acquire something out of top 10. Summing up the whole thing, what's next for runes? You know, I was not here, I was not in ordinals in BRC 20s when the whole thing started. And following information that I hear and see currently, we know that people minted these things, they bought these things in the first place, and then they were just holding and waiting for months until they eventually picked up. Currently, it's probably going to be a different situation because we like market knows what these things actually led to they led to crazy appreciation into assets and actually the narrative that had done like 100 axes thousand axes despite memes these are only brc 20s and originals because they were way way at the lower prices back in summer back in spring of the last year and things like that i would say the key thing would actually see runes marketplace and interesting thing that there are some centralized exchanges saying already that they will be supporting runes as well binance okx okx have a nice functionality for trading ordinal assets as well coinbase is actually i think it's listing perpetual options for ord which means that over time that would be adding top rune assets as well because the issue with these things is that when you buy into them it might be quite hard to actually be able to sell them you need to actually find the buyer if you have these assets on the exchanges no issues you would always be able to sell it to random joe from minnesota right one of the theses that i also wanted to cover as as a last part of this video so there is a lot of talk that the reason why we were dipping or going sideways after recent halvings is because it actually started to be extremely unprofitable for smaller miners to mine Bitcoin because the price was low, because their bounty was essentially decreasing in two. Therefore, we had a process where they were selling their Bitcoin and at the same time they were selling some of their equipment which pretty much led to sideways action, meaning that smaller companies were probably selling, larger companies that are profitable were buying, and it definitely took some time. And at the same time, it probably led to pure dumps, where there were just too many sellers at the same time, and buyers were eventually adding into the market over time, understanding that scarcity will probably lead to increase in the value. Of the asset something that we have that's very very interesting is this type of fees for btc because before halving we were at like 40 50 sets per vbyte and all this money that essentially are coming to miners therefore miners are more profitable therefore more mining companies and more miners can actually sustain the operations expecting this type of craziness moving forward as well unfortunately we already see that the transactions the commission for transactions is already going down because 300 350 that's something you were able to see back in december and january on days where there was some brc20 launch some minting going on and things like that but on average i still do expect that commissions will eventually increase and with the price of Bitcoin surging up and with more people adding into the space, it will definitely be increasing over time as well. On top of that, for miners currently to be profitable, they need BTC to stay at $60,000 level. And with all the inflows from ETFs, from Hong Kong, from London, from US as well, it's definitely an easier goal to actually achieve at this stage. Therefore, miners actually have less incentives to sell their stuff to bigger companies or sell their Bitcoin to become profitable. It's a very, very interesting situation that we actually might be having. That, that's, that's this thing that I'm supporting from my end because I don't think that we will have this sell in May and go away. Maybe we will at a certain extent because this is just like the mindset that installed 
in the mind frames of people. And if a lot of people are doing the same action that mostly, most likely market actually complies, like something like GameStop or meme coins, right? But it's at the same time, it's a very, very interesting situation in connection to this thing. And especially with the fact that markets are forward looking and man, election is in like what? Six, seven months from now. I do believe that FUD being created currently is almost on purpose to block people from buying, to block people from holding assets and to actually make them sell their assets, to make sure that they are poor closer to the end of the year because they don't have any options. They only have one option, pump up the stock market and, and print money. They don't have anything else. Narratives are being created for a reason, an old battle of the serpent and an eagle. Just my two cents and just something I actually wanted to share. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will be seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.